Constables, Norman Brennan, uh, who is, of course, former police officer himself, now director of the Law and Order Foundation. Norman, very good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Mike. Terrible scenes in Brixton last night. I mean, it, 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 I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that the police do not have control of the streets anymore. I'm afraid that's uh, absolutely correct. Um, you know, we're barely able to uh, police everyday issues. And uh, you've probably have reported on your programme, as many others have done hundreds of interviews over the last 10 years, about how we've lost 22,000 officers, uh, almost 4,000 in the Met. And when you actually count 4,000 in the Met, for example, that are lost, just look at how that is depleted, backing up their own colleagues and dealing with any white scale public disorders like we're beginning to see on our streets almost daily now. Yes, I mean, we're looking now at the, uh, the video shot from last night of a guy basically smashing up a police car. I'm told there was quite a few police cars smashed up. I mean, I saw that this morning uh, when I woke up, because I do my usual sort of trawl of what's been going on, and I wasn't sure if it was genuine, you know? I had to sort of double-take it and go... This is surely not happening, you know, like two, three miles away from where I am right now, sitting high above London Bridge, because it's not very far from here. And uh, and yet the police appear once again, like they were during those marches earlier on uh, this month, running away. Yes, and it's embarrassing. I mean, you know, I feel for my colleagues nowadays. I mean, when I was in the job for 31 years, I cannot recall a single time I ran away from an incident. Right. Uh, a, I knew I'd be getting back up. And B, we had this sort of fearlessness amongst us that um, the criminal element are not allowed to run riot. They're not allowed to rule the streets. That's our job. And we rule the streets on behalf of society to, you know, as I, I've said in the last programme, we're, we're the difference between right and wrong and good and bad. Yeah. But uh, the, the commission I saw this morning and what she does all the time now, and I can sort of see her political stance, is she plays it all down. Like, for example, there were just a small number of police vehicles damage well for goodness sake one bloody police vehicle is too much yeah. to have damage because that is one response vehicle that would not be responding to an urgent assistance mm. call and what i'm really concerned about mike is this is that i'm wondering what public order incident that outbreaks on the streets of an area most probably in london mm. that is going to ignite wide-scale public disorder throughout Britain. Yes. It takes one. And at this moment in time, it's like a litmus paper. Mm. Which well, incident is going to light it? Well, the problem is, I suppose, the police, uh, as they are now, would tell me, if I could get them to come on this radio show, uh, well, we didn't want the situation to escalate. That seems to be their mantra now. So they basically just get out. And that's all very well for them. But what about the people who are law-abiding citizens living in Brixton who don't want to see their streets smashed up, who don't want to see cars being set on fire and windows being smashed because they live there and they don't really wish to have the rule of the, the mob on the street? Absolutely. I, I said just now that I feel for my colleagues now because, uh, you know, when I see them running away, I, I just feel embarrassed. Yeah. And the, it's the worst type of message to send out to the law-abiding members of the public, which are in their tens of millions but the thing is, Mike, if they didn't run away from that situation, the baying mobs, and that's what they are, and some are armed. And if I remember rightly, I saw a sword. Some guy had a sword, yeah. At, at, my, at my police colleagues last night, mm. is that a police officer is going to be murdered. Yeah. And well, some of these guys will have guns as well. Well, they're, they're, they're probably not going to be bought out. Uh, at this moment in time, mm. um, that they were brought out after the Mark Duggan incident yeah. uh, up in places like uh, Birmingham. Yeah. But the biggest concern I have, Mike, is this, and I will say it again, I said it on your last programme, is that I believe that the mainstream media in Britain are stoking and inciting people to act disorderly on the streets of Britain. It's almost as though they would love it if there was wide-scale public disorder so they can increase their circulation. And one Sky News uh, sports reporter the other day accused the British Police Service of murdering I saw that. black criminals. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you now, and I will stand up to anyone and everyone, there has not been a single black person murdered by the police in Britain. There has never been a single conviction. But just look at the damage that these inflammatory and slanderous mm. statements are. And Sky News, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people, Mike, have cancelled their subscriptions. Mm. I'm doing the same. You cannot have the mainstream media causing or inciting mayhem. And every day on Sky News, I have to turn it off. Morning, 
afternoon, mm. evening. Well, one of the things, one of the points, of course, that he made was that the fact that, the, that, that no police have been convicted is part of the problem. You know, his, his inference being that the, the justice system sort of protects them. But that's not the case. Mm. Um, every single uh, person that dies in police custody, and it's never anything that we want, is thoroughly investigated, not by the police, but by independent investigations, yeah. often taking years. Officers are under stress. Now, this is not a numbers game where for every 10 black people that uh, are, are killed on the streets uh, or, or die in police custody, that we will throw an officer under the bus. The reason why no police officer has ever been convicted of murder in Britain is because you have the best police service in the world, the most tolerant in the world, and at this moment in time, they're being blamed for all society's wrongs. Mm. And don't forget, the police are the public, the public are the police. They're attacking their own. And for well, what? I mean, if we say in this country, as I've often heard in the past few weeks, the policing uh, of this nation is done by consent at the moment, um, it is not being done by consent because at the moment it's not being done at all, partly because there are people uh, who are making the lives of police officers individually very difficult. Because I don't know what happens tonight, for example. I mean, you know, it's going to be very hot. People are going to be out. The reason apparently for the disorder in the first place was a street party, uh, which people were having. There was a police helicopter apparently above it for about uh, several hours from about seven o'clock at night. It was, to all intents and purposes, an illegal gathering. Um, but you have to ask the question, who then sends the police into something like that um, if they're not going to be able to do anything? What's the point? Well, you're caught between a rock and a hard place, the police and are. Yeah. I mean, you've got men and women that, um, you know, just want to police their own areas. They look, they go into their police stations every day and they see hundreds of crimes being reported. Yeah. Some were grade one, and that's uh, an immediate response, which they can't attend. Mm. The grade twos, which is like a burglary where the suspect's not on. The victim will never, ever see a police officer. Well, just look at the difference that a police officer turning up, even if no one's nicked, that cares, that takes a statement, mm. that looks for forensics, that updates you on an investigation, that tells you that, don't worry, we have got some DNA, and at any time that matches anybody else, believe you me, we will arrest them. Mm. Well, when the public don't see that, the public get disenfranchised from the police. They lose their confidence in the face, yeah. and their faith. And the unfortunate thing is at the moment, whilst the general public um, support the police and respect them, I'm afraid the faith in them to turn up and do the jobs that they expect them to do is plummeting. And that is not what policing is all about. No, because what I was going to say uh, was, Norman, what happens tonight if there's another street party and the police are called by someone who's not happy? Um, what do they do? Well, the police will turn up and they will be attacked. Uh, police vehicles uh, will be damaged and sadly the public will see um, many people in uniforms running away when really they should stay there. But the thing is, you put yourself in a police officer's position. These are men and women with families. They want to go home at the end of the day. They don't want to fight certain sections of the community. They just want to do policing. Right. Now, one thing, I, I went to a family funeral yesterday over in Beckenham and I was driving back through Croydon. I've got a nice little soft top. And I was looking around, and I just didn't feel at ease. And I thought to myself, I bet you if it cracks off, it will probably be in this area. Mm. I drove through four roads where I had reported murders. And also, you remember that uh, youth or that black youth that attacked a vehicle with a knife last year. Yeah. And I thought to myself, God bless the people that live in Croydon and the surrounding areas, because I'll be quite honest with you, that is the area that I can see it cracking off on. And mm. it only needs one spark to ignite public disorder on Britain, and then we are in absolutely chaos. That is anarchy. Yeah. Don't forget, we've just come through the coronavirus. Yeah. We've just come through lockdown, and tens of thousands of businesses have been lost. Hundreds of thousands of people are out of work. Do you really think that we now want large, wide-scale public disorder on our streets? Because I'm telling you, I hope I'm wrong, it's coming. Yeah, I hope you're wrong as well, Norman, but I, I'm afraid that we are in this place partly because of the um, inactivity and the inability of the management of the police forces. I have absolute sympathy with every single man and woman who's out there in a uniform trying to keep order, but they're fighting a losing battle because they're not being given the tools uh, with which to do it properly. And it seems to me that what's lacking here is any kind of creative thinking. You know, I understand that they can't go in like they used to do in the old days with the old crash helmets and the batons and start beating people. But, you know, there must be a, another way, surely. 
you'd like to think so. Uh, what I found out, and I've been in policing since the Brixton riots right up to after the Mark Duggan uh, situation, and it's this is that the criminal black element behind the Black Lives Movement, what they love is tension between the police they like the, the, and, the, and the communities. They like that mistrust because what it means is that they can carry out their crimes with immunity and with impunity. And the sad reality is, is that police have to find their way around it. And the point that I didn't clear up earlier on, Mike, is that out of about 140 uh, people that have died in police custody, the last 10 years, eight have been black, a few ethnic minorities, the majority are white. And as I say again, not one single police officer has ever been convicted of murdering a black uh, suspect on the streets of Britain. And when we keep on getting all these allegations, and none of them, none of them are challenged. The mainstream media, I mean, I'm one of the only white people in Britain and white voices in Britain, has said, hold on, there's some answers to this. Black people go to prison a lot longer than white people in some cases because in some cases they're far more violent people of the black origin are stopped and searched far more than white because when a robbery happens sometimes we will stop 15 people because they could be a suspect or they could be a witness the burglaries that are happening three streets away by five white people will never go down as a stop and search they will go down as an arrest and conviction when we do the inquiries that's when we do them if we've got the officers so, of course, all these robberies, and there's tens of thousands of them, and we do stop and searches, and the pace is what we've got to do. We've got to record the details. Of course they're going to skyrocket, but what the mainstream media and the black angry activists are using are these figures that are never challenged. Well, I can challenge every single one, and if I could do so rationally, my tens of millions of people in Britain would say, do you know what? There's actually many answers to these questions mm. and allegations that are never, ever challenged. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. Norman, thanks very much indeed. Norman Brennan there, a director of the Law and Order Foundation, uh, giving us his um, situation, giving us his description of how policing is working in this country or how it's not working uh, and how it does work. And I think these are the things that we need to talk about because what we can't have, no matter who is behind it, is a sort of lawlessness on the streets of this country. Don't forget, uh, Brixton is a very vibrant part of South London. Loads of people live in Brixton. Not everybody who lives in Brixton is of one particular ethnic minority. There's an awful lot of white people that live in Brixton. There's an awful lot uh, of Asian people that live in Brixton. There's all sorts of people living in all sorts of areas of London. And it's not going to be necessary to turn it into some kind of cultural war. And nobody wants violence on the streets of this country, surely. And the police are in a very bad place right now. They don't know what to do. And I don't think the, the people that run the police service in London know what to do. For example, tonight, what are you going to do if there's another street party? Are you just going to ignore it? Are you just going to let it go ahead if you're the police? Or are you going to go back in and try and put it to uh, an end? I have literally no idea what the answer to that is.